Hey guys, Alex Hoskins here with you again for part two of our three-part video series detailing Storm's pin buffer layout system. Now this second video, all about the second measurement in Storm's pin buffer layout system, the PSA to PAP distance. Now what is the PSA to PAP distance and what effects does it have on ball motion? Just like with the last video, we're gonna take a look at some graphics first to see what's happening on the inside of the bowling ball and then later we'll see how that translates into ball motion as we throw some bowling balls down the lane. But first, I want you to look again at this table. You'll see now this time I have three different intense bowling balls. Now each one of these intense bowling balls features a different PSA to PAP distance. On the left over here, we have a two inch PSA to PAP distance. In the middle, we have a four inch PSA to PAP distance. And on the right, we have a six inch PSA to PAP distance. Now, as with the other video, the other two measurements in Storm's pin buffer layout system have been held constant on all three of these bowling balls. Now, this means the pin to PAP distance on all three bowling balls is five inches. The pin buffer on all three bowling balls is two inches. So let's take a look at those graphics and see what that PSA to PAP distance is changing on the inside of the bowling ball. And then later, we'll see how that translates as I throw these balls down the lane. Let's take a look. Here we have the rad E core that is found inside the intents. The PSA to PAP distance is going to control the strength of the intermediate differential. Changes in the PSA to PAP distance will position the PSA at different angles at the moment of release. Let's use our three example PSA to PAP distances so we can better understand how the PSA is positioned inside the ball at the moment of release. Let's position the PSA with a 2 inch PSA to PAP distance and send it into rotation. You'll see that this positions the PSA on its side and the rotation is fairly stable. This is because we've placed the PSA in a position in which it is almost completely lined up upon release. Since it is nearly stable upon release, the PSA will not need to migrate much in order to achieve a stable position. This will result in less overall flare and a smooth motion down the lane. Now let's position the PSA with a 4 inch PSA to PAP distance and send it into rotation. You'll now see how much more unstable the rotation is. This is because the PSA is sitting at nearly a 45 degree angle on the inside of the bowling ball upon release. It is very unstable and needs to migrate significantly to achieve a stable position. This will result in more overall flare and, a, and much more motion both front to back and left to right. Finally, let's position the PSA with a 6 inch PSA to PAP distance and send it into rotation. Once again, this positions the PSA in a nearly stable orientation at the moment of release. The PSA is not going to have to migrate very far to achieve a stable position. This will result in less overall flare and a much straighter path throughout the entire lane. Keep in mind these graphics have both zero degrees of both axis tilt and axis rotation. Additionally, a six and three quarter inch pin to PAP distance is shown. We are just using this as a basic example to see the angle in which the core is oriented at the moment of release with different PSA to PAP distances. We have put some contrasting markers on each of these bowling balls to help you see how the migration is occurring as we watch these balls go down the lane. The first marker was placed on the initial positive axis point. The second marker was placed exactly three and a half inches away from the initial positive axis point along the migration path so we can see how quickly the migration passes over this point. Keep in mind, the second marker doesn't represent the final axis the ball achieves when it is rolling. We are just using these markers as a visual aid to help us see how unstable the ball is and how quickly it is migrating as it goes down the lane. This first video compares the 4 inch intents to the 2 inch intents. The first difference you'll notice is how much faster the migration crosses the second colored marker on the 4 inch intents on the left. This is because the PSA is in a much more unstable position upon release. This causes more flare and more overall hook. You'll see that the 2 inch intents on the right lines up almost as quick, but since the PSA is not in as unstable of a position, the ball does not have enough energy to get through the pins properly. 
You'll notice how much more deflection there is in the two inch intents on the right compared to the four inch intents on the left. If you're looking for a ball reaction a bit smoother off the end of the pattern, shorter PSA to PAP distances can provide you the control you're looking for. They line up early and are much more stable off the end of the pattern. This time we are comparing the four inch intents to the six inch intents. This is where the differences become more noticeable as the balls go down the lane. As we saw in the previous video, the four inch intents on the left lines up at about 30 feet down the lane. The six inch intents on the right lines up about five feet later. Since it's lining up later and the PSA is in such a weak position further away from the positive axis point, this causes the ball to store more energy and not have enough time to achieve the roll phase as it enters the pins. The stronger position of the PSA on the four inch intents on the left makes the ball much stronger overall. You'll see that the six inch intents on the right is much straighter throughout the entire lane because of the weak position of the PSA. This can be good for rev dominant players that are afraid of using strong asymmetrical equipment. Sometimes you need a stronger shell with a weaker drill to create the right shape, especially when the lanes break down in today's game. This final video compares the two inch intents to the six inch intents. The differences between these two balls are tough to see even with the colored markers on the ball. The six inch intents lines up slightly later. Since the PSA is in such a weak position farther from the positive axis point, it causes the ball to tumble more through the front part of the lane. Think back to the position of the core on the graphics we just showed. The ball isn't strong enough to make it back to the pocket with a PSA position this far from the positive axis point. The two inch intense on the left is also in a weaker position since it is closer to the positive axis point, it lines up faster and starts up a bit earlier. Since it starts up a bit earlier, it makes it back to the pocket but doesn't quite continue through the pins. As you can see, if you're a speed dominant player looking to get maximum amount of flair out of an asymmetrical bowling ball, you'll want to place the PSA in an unstable position so it is fully utilized. All right, guys, that wraps up part two of our three-part video series detailing Storm's pin buffer layout system. Now, hopefully you learned a little bit about the PSA to PAP distance, what effects it has on the inside of the bowling ball, and how that translates to ball motion as the bowling ball goes down the lane. Be sure to check out the other two parts of our three-part video series detailing the other two measurements in Storm's pin buffer layout system. Once again, I want to thank you guys for taking the time to watch this video. And always remember to bowl up a storm.